The outlook for MG Rover is as bleak as the weather. Tonight, we're reporting from Longbridge on the day the administrators were called in. As emotions run high at Longbridge, a government minister fights back the tears. I haven't been thinking about the election or marginal seats or anything like that. I've been thinking about the people here at Longbridge who are facing, they and their families, appalling anxiety. And the Bishop of Birmingham gives his support by ordering a new rover. Time has come for all of us who live in Birmingham in a place like this that we should risk. be buying cars that are made in Birmingham. Good evening for the thousands of people who work here and the many thousands more who are reliant on the money they earn. This week's events have been sudden and they've been devastating. Today, MG Rover confirmed it had called in the administrators. This afternoon, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor arrived in Birmingham to face the nightmare of Longbridge going bust in the run-up to a general election. Well, we'll be talking to the politicians a little later, but first, we hear from the workers themselves as they arrived at Longbridge. It's unfair. We've worked so hard. And I don't think we should be treated in such a fashion. You're quite devastating, you know. I mean, I've been here 20 years. Do I retrain for another job? I've been here 40 years nearly, since as an apprentice. And uh, I can remember when we had over 40% of the market building rubbish. We're now building good cars and nobody buy them. Nobody can understand it. Well, today, a government minister broke down in tears as she talked about what had happened here at MG Rover. A task force has been set up to try and soften the blow to the West Midlands economy. Well, first we hear from Steve Keeling, who talks about today's dramatic events. First thing in the morning, and another day of waiting for the 6,000 workers at Longbridge. With production halted, there's little else to do but worry about the future. The failure last night of talks with the Chinese carmaker Shanghai Automotive has left everyone shocked and saddened, including the minister who was trying to set up the deal. I haven't been thinking about the election or marginal seats or anything like that. I've been thinking about the people here at Longbridge who are facing, they and their families, appalling anxiety. That's what I've been thinking about. You seem quite emotional about this. I feel very strongly about this. You know, people are losing their jobs or risk losing their jobs. And that's what I care about. From the unions, there was the expected promise of a fight to save the plant. And, more surprisingly, a suggestion that the deal with China might still go ahead. No, we don't want to set people's hopes uh, high or or things flying here, but uh, we do need to realise that it's not our intentions to see this plant become a supermarket and disappear overnight. The deal with Shanghai Automotive, for example, is a deal that's based on good business logic, and if we were to start there to try and resurrect that deal, that would be the best place, in my view, uh, to, to start at the moment. Meanwhile, the company's administrators have started work, and they're ruling nothing out. We're interested in talking to any uh, parties who are interested uh, in the business. What are talks ongoing? Uh, talks at the moment, we've, got, we've been approached by a certain uh, number of people and we'd be, uh, we'd be delighted to hear from more people. A task force begins work on Monday to try and salvage something from the wreckage of MG Rover. It'll have at least £40 million from the government to help the company and its suppliers. And the sorts of things it'll go on is helping the people that have to find new work um, find how they can retrain, how they can skill themselves up. So there'll be a big piece with Job Centre Plus and those sorts of agencies. And then on the business side, there'll be money to help those businesses for whom their dependency on Rover has been huge, and they will be encouraged through things like wage subsidies to um, take a breather, find new markets, retrain their staff. More immediate support came from the Bishop of Birmingham. He came to Longbridge to order a new Rover 75, something he says more of us should do. To me, this message is very clear. Maybe time has come 
for all of us who live in Birmingham in a place like this that we should be buying cars that are made in Birmingham. That actually we should be more concerned about buying things that are made in Britain. Because otherwise, our future in terms of manufacturing base will actually go. Rover is 100 years old this year. Sadly, a company that should be celebrating its centenary is instead pondering its future. Well, with me now is David Morris, who's an, from Coventry University. He's an expert on the fortunes or mixed fortunes of MG Rover. What do you think went wrong, David, with the Chinese deal? Well, I think we have to look partially to China for this itself because over recent months the Chinese car market has actually slipped somewhat and although demand is still rising there's very big excess supply in China and prices are falling quite rapidly so I think the the conditions for a merger have very different to as they were in in November when or way back when this was first being talked about added to that that it's now become much more public knowledge that Rover's financial position was much more precarious than I think anybody thought it was. I think there's good reason to suppose that Shanghai Automotive have basically got cold feet. Yeah, even if the deal had gone through, is it likely, do you think, that production would have moved from Longbridge to China? I don't think it follows that production would have moved to China. Contrary to most people's beliefs, China is not the cheapest place in, in the world to produce cars. Shanghai Automotive's biggest partner is Volkswagen. And Volkswagen, until recently, have been saying it costs more to produce a Passat in Shanghai than it does in Germany. So there is a tendency for some manufacturers to want to build cars in the country where the ma major market is. And for Rover, that's always been the UK. David, thanks very much. Well, they do say that if Rover sneezes, Birmingham catches a cold, and that certainly is true in this part of the world. We join Steve Keeling now, who's in Longbridge Lane, at the heart of the car workers' community. Yes, Bob, it's not just MG Rover's uh, workers and their suppliers who are concerned. This entire community, its homeowners, its business owners, are equally anxious. Rory Catru spent a day here to get a taste of how they think what could be the devastating effects of the closure of this factory. The giant MG Rover car plant not only dominates the skyline, but it dominates life in the South Birmingham district of Longbridge. Roger Page has run this newsagent on the Longbridge Lane for 40 years, and once again, it's Rover making all the headlines. Well, 40 years ago, there used to be um, about 40,000 workers, and uh, used to have what they call the bull, and uh, there was a terrific stampede towards the shops, and we'd need about six people to um, you know, serve them, and, and now one or two is enough. Next door, Claire Hassel is a hairdresser and listens to the gloomy tales about Rover's future. People walk to work, so they're stopping on the way to work, on the way back from work. You've got all the other shops along here as well, like small news agents, and you know they're all sort of family-based businesses, which you know are going to really suffer from that. Here at the Longbridge Social Club, many past and present Rover workers spend their spare time. We brought together a former assembly line worker for 25 years, a paint shop worker, a former union rep and a team leader. I'm thinking about the old generation, the young people who've got mortgages and houses and want to go. What was it like when you worked there compared to how it is now? Oh, it was uh, very busy, very busy. I mean, there was about 30,000 when I was there. You all knew each other and you depended on each other. And there was a great esprit de corps feeling about the place. It's a camaraderie ship. It's, it, it, it's fantastic. You've worked with them. You, you've been there that long with them. It's, it's, it's work. And you take that away. They've got nothing, have they? Each day adds to the uncertainty and concerns about people's futures, families and homes. If we knew what was going to happen, everybody could start planning their futures. I'm sure the people who work at the factory have postponed moves for some time because they've been uncertain about their jobs. Few places are so reliant on one company, so attached to one brand. The people of Longbridge are contemplating life without their famous car plants for the first time in a century. I'm joined now by Councillor Mike Whitby, leader of Birmingham City Council. Now, Councillor, is this the end for Longbridge? 
Well, yesterday we thought it was receivership. Today we know it's administration. Hopefully some consortium, some private consortium, will make a bid, and I sincerely hope the Price Waterhouse, obviously whilst administering, will be able to make an attractive offer to somebody. I certainly believe we still have skills, and I would like to truly hope that something may come from this. Now, I know you've had a very busy day. What is it you're doing to try to help? Well, it's been a catastrophic day today for Rover employees and their families. We must do everything that we can to support them. I have today announced a Rover support package, which includes immediately addressing 20 extra advisors in the southwest regeneration zone here to uh, give advice financial and social uh, on social affairs, a dedicated telephone hotline, a dedicated website page, which will grow as we integrate a strategic response, £10 million to create a new region generation zone to reskill, encourage entrepreneurship and build up starter units. And you've got a helpline phone number, what's that? We have a helpline phone number 0800 0800 and, and that will be open as from now. Councillor, thank you very much. That number again, 0800 Back to you, Bob. Well, as the leader of the council just said, this week's events have been a blow, not just for the people who work here, but for the suppliers and, of course, for the dealers. Chris James has been with a dealer in Litchfield to ask him, what are you going to do now? Dealership manager Phil Whiting has spent much of the day reassuring his employees they will be keeping their jobs for the time being. As of yet, there's been no decision as to what will happen to the Rover dealerships around the West Midlands. Litchfield MG Rover intend to stay operational and continue selling vehicles. At the moment, we're not sure what's going on. Um, but for us, it's business as usual, really. Um, we have people who are sort of picking up their new car today. And obviously, we're looking forward to selling some as well. So we carry on. He's not hiding the fact he's worried about the future of his business, but has told his staff to carry on regardless of what's going on at Longbridge. The Shiptons today purchased their brand new Rover 45. They've had Rovers for years, and to reinforce their loyalty, bought another one. It's kept its uh, image over years, and uh, yes, it does look uh, possibly a bit uh, older, but uh, I still like it. As looks, in dated. It looks yes, probably a little more solid, that's the thing. It looks a little bit more solid, I think. Meanwhile, despite their manager's words of support, there's still concern among employees. A little worried, yeah. But at the moment, I'm taking everything as it comes and uh, I'm just treat, treating it as business as usual and getting on with my jobs. Obviously, at first, I was a bit worried about the news. Um, I'd be telling fibs if I wasn't worried about it. But I'm sure we'll come through. Back in Birmingham, a factory supplying zinc-plated engine parts to Rover had their orders cancelled today. I see the future being extremely bleak. The problem that we have with manufacturing at the moment is, as you know, it's all going to the Far East, and this is a, a huge blow to the manufacturing sector. But MG Rover car sales will go on, for the time being anyway. So the market may be down 10% for cars like this one here, this Rover 75, but on the other side of the business, it's a different story. MGs like this one here, well, the sales of these particular cars are up by 51%. So, consumers are still buying them. There doesn't seem to be a problem there. At the moment, franchises like this one here will keep selling until told otherwise. Chris James in Litchfield for Central News. Well, ironically, plans were already underway to celebrate 100 years production here at Longbridge. That was coming up in July. Uh, a bit later on in the programme, we're going to be looking at the highs and lows of Longbridge over the last century. But now it's, it's back to Joe in the studio. Bob, thank you very much for now. While well, the Prime Minister came straight back from the Pope's funeral in Rome to meet union leaders in Birmingham, and the Chancellor, Gordon Brown, was with him. Well, with me in the studio now is our political editor, Peter Hayes. Peter, they must be worried. They've sent the big guns straight up to Birmingham. Well, yes, of course they are. I mean, really, this is the most appalling news. It's been something they've been actually expecting but dreading for many, many weeks. And you can tell how serious it is, as you say, by the fact that the Prime Minister and the Chancellor arrived here together a couple of hours ago. Prime Minister coming straight from the Pope's uh, funeral. And what they did was they went round to the Transport and General Workers Union HQ in Broad Street and had a cup of tea with Rover workers trying to reassure them. And after that meeting, this this is what the Prime Minister had to say. We have been doing, we will continue to do absolutely everything we can and everything we can to keep car production and as many jobs as possible at Longbridge. This is a good plant, they're a fantastic workforce, 
Um, there is no doubt at all in our mind that any company would be glad to have a workforce such as that. So they're not going to bail the company out, but would it have cost them more in votes had they have bailed it out? I think it would, Joe, because taxpayers uh, wouldn't have liked it very much. They would have seen it obviously as throwing good money after bad. And in any case, it would have been illegal. It's against the rules of the European Union. And it's bound to make for a, an interesting election campaign in this part of the world now. Well, yes, this is going to cast a pall over the whole of the election campaign as far as Labour are concerned. Don't forget, it only needs a swing of around 7% or less and Labour would lose 13 seats, which would, of course, be catastrophic uh, for them. But it could have been even worse. If you notice, no one is pointing the finger of blame at the government. No one's accusing them of being responsible. And that's because the opposition, for example, never came up with an alternative plan. But there is some bitterness tonight, you know, because obviously workers are worried about their futures. And there's also bitterness about the management. When one union leader said John Towers had done a magnificent job in keeping the plant open for the past five years, one MP replied, well, yes, and he's been paid magnificently as well. But the focus now is on jobs. And on Monday, the Rover Task Force swings into action. Peter Hayes, thank you for that. Well, throughout the day, we've been asking you for your views on what's happened at Rover. And here are a few of your messages, starting with Matthew Broadhurst. He lives in Longbridge and has friends and neighbours who work at the factory. He says his community is in shock tonight. Darren Yardley works for the firm's contact centre. He thinks £100 million is loose change to the government and more should have been done to save the 6,000 jobs at the factory. But Larry from Redditch has no sympathy. Rover has been bailed out more times than Jack the Ripper shut it down. That's what he says. You're watching Central News at 6, still ahead on tonight's programme, a fond look back at the glory days of the Longbridge plant, including its most famous product. Wave the flags for the Austin 7 and the Morris Mini Minor. Now at about 17 minutes past six, we're moving on to other news to spend in the garden. And I take advantage of Sunday and uh, Monday's good weather because from Tuesday onwards, things do turn more unsettled again. So some better days coming, but a frosty night tonight. Beware. Bye-bye. Central weather with BMIBaby.com, the airline with tiny fares. Well, chilly weather to match a chilly headline here on the programme tonight. To wrap up tonight's programme, let's go back to Bob at Longbridge. Thanks, Joe. Well, this summer, the Longbridge plant is due to market centenary, and already those celebrations are being planned. One has to ask, will there be much to celebrate? But for the moment, let's join Fraser Shepherd. He looks, looks back. The Longbridge factory was built in the 1890s as a printing works which folded in 1901. It was sitting empty when Herbert Austin went looking for a place to build motor cars and an industrial legend was born. By the 30s the factory covered 62 acres and was to expand again to cope with its output of mass-produced vehicles. Renamed the British Motor Corporation in the 50s, Longbridge churned out its two millionth car and in 1959 produced an all-time classic in the Mini. Wave the flags for the Austin 7 and the Morris Mini Minor. The nippy, zippy, rearing for a trippy twins. The spacious, gracious, handsomely curvaceous twins. The cars that are turning Mr. Man in the street into Mr. Man behind the wheel. It's still Longbridge's most prolific product. In total, more than five million minis rolled off the production lines. In 1968, Britain's motor manufacturers came together in a grand alliance called British Leyland, which was quickly to become a byword for industrial unrest and mechanical unreliability. Not to handle the products of this company. Shop steward Derek Robinson, dubbed Red Robbo by the media, led a series of strikes which crippled production. In 1975, BL was effectively nationalised and industrial hard man Michael Edwards was brought in to stop the rot. He set up a partnership with Honda to bring Japanese reliability to British Leyland, but it was clear the company was only surviving because of injections of public money. The public and politicians alike grew weary of propping up the loss-making giant and in the mid-80s British Leyland was broken up and privatised. Rover was sold to British Aerospace and six years later to BMW, signifying the end of a British-owned mass producer of cars. 
Like aerospace, BMW struggled to turn round Rover's fortunes and after another six years decided to hang on only to the now revamped Mini but move production away from Longbridge. The rest of Rover, dubbed the English Patient, was unceremoniously dumped. A huge campaign began to save the Longbridge plant and eventually Rover was sold to a management buyout team for just £10. In 2003 it produced its five millionth Rover, somewhat against the odds. For 30 years, Longbridge's owners, both private and public, have faced one crisis after another in their efforts to make the plant profitable. The present crisis is certainly not the first. The question, of course, is whether it'll be the last. And we'll be tackling that question and others in a special programme on ITV Central on Sunday called Rover, the end of the road. It's at 12.15 on Sunday. I hope you can join us. Until then, from Longbridge, it's good night. Farewell to the People's Pope. At